solidarity and sympathy with those suffering in the midst of tragedy in Connecticut, we'll begin our invocation with a moment of silence and then continue into our invocation. Please be silent with me. Gracious God, we thank you for this commencement service, which is both culmination and beginning. We thank you for the journey of education these graduates have enjoyed and for the character formation that has occurred along the way. We thank you for all those who took part in that education and formation, from food service staff to professors to deans, and for their continuing commitment to excellence, for the friends and family who celebrate with the graduates, for their support, their dreams, and the meaning their pride adds to this achievement. And for California University, with our shared values of integrity, civility, and responsibility that bind our hearts in common principle and purpose. For turning I could to I will, classmates to friends, professors to inspiration, we thank you. May we have the same transformative power in all we do. Amen. You may be seated. Before we, we begin, let me make a brief mention that should the fire alarm go off, please remain calm and in your seats and await further direction from me should there indeed be an emergency. Good evening and welcome to California University of Pennsylvania's 175th commencement celebration. I am Dr. Bruce Barnhart, acting provost of California University of Pennsylvania, and it's my pleasure to introduce the members of the platform party and several other persons here with us today. I will begin introductions with those seated in the back row and ask each person to stand as his or her name is called. And may I ask that you, the audience, Hold your applause until everyone is introduced. Dr. Daniel Engstrom, Associate Provost and Associate Vice President of Student Retention and Success. Dr. Carol Sheffield, Interim Associate Provost. Dr. Stephen Whitehead, Interim Associate Provost. Dr. John Callis, Interim Dean, Eberly College of Science and Technology. Dr. Mohamed Yamba, Interim Dean, College of Liberal Arts. Dr. Kevin Corey, Dean, College of Education and Human Services. Dr. Stanley Kamasik, Dean, School of Graduate Studies and Research, Associate Provost. Dr. Nancy Pinardi, Interim Vice President for Student Affairs. Dr. Charles Mance, Vice President for University Technology Services. Mr. Robert Thorne, Vice President for Administration and Finance. The Reverend Jana Quisenberry, Pastor, California United Christian Church. Dr. Catherine Mitchum, Professor and Edith L. Trees Endowed Chair, and tonight's Herald. Dr. William Biddington, Professor, Department of Exercise Science and Sports Studies, Faculty Marshal. Mr. Michael Crozen, Student Member, Council of Trustees. Mr. Michael Napolitano, Class of 1968, Cl Council of Trustees. Mr. Aaron Walton, Vice Chair, Board of Governors, Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, Class of 1968, Council of Trustees. Mr. Robert Ire, Chair, Council of Trustees. Ms. Adele Lynn, Class of 1974, tonight's guest speaker. Mrs. Geraldine Jones, Acting President, 
California University of Pennsylvania. Representatives from the Alumni Association who will be presenting alumni pins to the graduates are, seated to my left, Mrs. Kathleen Connolly, class of 1995 and 1996, director of Cal U for Life. Mrs. Leslie Fleener, class of 2008, assistant director of Cal U for Life. At this time, under the direction of Dr. Hugo Eikach, the University Choir will now present Forever Cow, words and music by Bob Dylan and Rod Stewart, arranged by Russ Shively. Good evening, University Trustees, Reverend Quisenberry, Ms. Lynn, distinguished guests, parents and family members, and members of the graduating class of 2012. I welcome you to California University of Pennsylvania's 175th commencement ceremony. I would like to begin my remarks this evening with a special thank you to the faculty members present for their hard work and dedication on behalf of our students. You have demonstrated your commitment to teaching, mentoring, and challenging our students, and we thank you for all your contributions. Please, faculty members, stand and be recognized. Thank you. I have been associated with this university for approximately 45 years. First, as a student, both graduate and undergraduate, then as a faculty member, dean, provost, and now as the acting president, as an alumna and as an employee. I have always been proud of California University and this great institution has been an important and big part of my life. In my current role as acting president, I'm even more proud of this university and, the, and cognizant of its proud history and the history yet to be written. I am proud of you, our graduates, 
for your hard work and the sacrifices you made to get to this point. I am very much aware of the role each of you will play in the future of our country and our world. For over 160 years, this university has provided students with a first-class education. Those students have gone out into the world after receiving their diplomas, just like you, our graduates here this evening will do, and these alumni have made a difference. They have changed lives, reshaped communities, and made a world a better place, and you will have the opportunity to do the same. Whether your master's degree is in education, or exercise science, or business, you can contribute greatly to the world around you. Remember to help others, to give a kind or encouraging word to those you meet, and to always count your blessings. Each of us has a responsibility to care for our fellow man. So I ask you to lead the way. Ponder how you can lend a hand to make a difference. No matter what career path you choose, those special moments you spend helping others will shape you into a great human being. As graduates, all of you will take different paths in life. There will be many opportunities for you and many decisions that will need to be made. Those opportunities and decisions will never cease, but each one will enhance your character, help determine your future, and add another experience to your life story. Eleanor Roosevelt said, the purpose of life is to live it, to taste experience to the utmost, to reach out eagerly and without fear for newer and richer experience. Be confident as you taste those experiences. Appreciate your talents and gifts and follow your dreams. Live your life vibrantly and enjoy every step of your journey. As you enter this next exciting phase in your life, we ask that you remember Cal U, the friends you've made here, the professors who have mentored you, and even those times which may have tested you and caused you to throw your hands up in frustration because all these experiences have contributed to the person you are today. Please know that your relationship with Cal U does not end here. A new phase is about to begin. When you depart with your diploma, you will be an alumna or alumnus, and we hope you will have a lifelong learning relationship with this great institution. We will welcome you back to campus with open arms whenever you are able to visit. As you prepare to walk across the stage this evening, to be vested with the academic hood and to receive your diploma, please pause for a second and give yourself a mental pat on the back. Take in the moment and bask in your success. You have worked hard, you have persevered, and you have accomplished something significant. Be proud of yourself. Think of the parents and family and friends who have helped you and encouraged you along the way. And remember that this is truly the beginning of an exciting chapter in your life. A different one, of course, but an exciting one nonetheless. All of us here at Cal U are trustees, administrators, faculty and staff, and your fellow alumni are proud of each of you and your achievements. And we offer our heartfelt congratulations to you. 
May your life be filled with continued successes, just enough challenges to make it interesting, and abundant joy. Congratulations. Thank you. I am pleased to introduce Ms. Adele Lynn, class of 1974. Adele Lynn has served since 1982 as the founder and owner of the Adele Lynn Leadership Group, an international consulting and training firm whose clients include many Fortune 500 names. Her business in North America focuses on helping organizations forge trusting relationships and improve productivity and quality through improvements in emotional intelligence and workplace trust. Her work on emotional intelligence is offered through strategic partners throughout Latin America, India, and Europe. Ms. Lynn lectures at colleges and universities throughout the United States. A member of the National Speakers Association, she is a frequent guest on radio and television shows in the United States and Canada. She is the author of six books published in 11 languages, including the critically acclaimed In Search of Honor, Lessons from Workers on How to Build Trust. Ms. Lin is the author of a CD-ROM, video, and participants book, Mentoring, Passing on the Torch, that won the Athena Award for Excellence in Mentoring. Her books for trainers and coaches are 50 Activities for Developing Emotional Intelligence in Leaders, which has consistently been a bestseller in training and development publications, and the Emotional Intelligence Activity Book, which has been published in five languages. Business publisher Amicom released Ms. Lin's book, The EQ Difference, in 2004, followed in 2007 by Quick Emotional Intelligence Activities for Busy Managers. Her latest book, The EQ Interview, Finding Employees with High Emotional Intelligence, was released in 2008 and endorsed by the Society of Human Resource Management. It also was featured as a cover story for Harvard Management Update. Ms. Lin earned her bachelor's degree in environmental science at Cal U and her master's degree from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. In 2010, she received IUP's Distinguished Alumni Scholar Award. In 2011, the Cal U Alumni Association recognized her professional achievements by presenting her with the Meritorious Award. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Adele Lin. Good evening. I am delighted to be here. President Jones, trustees, platform party guests, faculty, graduates, and guests. I can't tell you how proud I am. This is truly a cow moment for me. And I am very proud of you, and I had nothing to do with your accomplishments. So uh, I'm just uh, thrilled to be here. You know, if you Google commencement speeches on YouTube, you get the likes of Oprah and Denzel Washington and uh, J Stephen Jobs and all kind of amazing people who have achieved great things. And it's amazing because they have achieved great fame and great fortune, but they've done it in their chosen fields, and we look with admiration to what others have done. So I know what you were thinking when you heard that Adele was going to be speaking at your commencement. <laughs> you were thinking, oh great, I wonder if she's going to sing Rolling in the Deep. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you. I know what you were expecting, 
And then you figured out, it didn't take you long to figure out, oh no, not that Adele. And you realize that you're stuck with me. Well, I apologize for your disappointment, but I can't apologize for being me. You see, Adele Lynn is all that I can be. In fact, I think it's our obligation, all of us, you and me, to be the best version of you that you can. But we can't be more. We can't imitate. It's not about imitating. It's not about seeking fame or fortune. It's not about wishing that you won the lottery. I'm sorry to disappoint you that with this bad news, but what I learned from my Cal statistics professors long, long ago is that you're probably not going to win the lottery, so you better have a backup plan. My, black, my backup plan, and I would share it with you, is to figure out who you are, where you're going, and how to be the best that you can be and continue to improve. You know, our software developers keep coming up with new versions. You know, there's 1.0, and then there's 1.1, and 1.2, and 2.0, et cetera. And you know, I, I hate to tell you this, but I actually remember Windows 1.0. Um, I know that dates me, so I'm sorry about that. And now we're what on version, and I remember all the versions in between, and now we're on Windows 8. But the idea is to continuously improve to achieve a better version of the last. And I think that's what all of us need to do. And it's a constant evolution of the same basic premise. And as I look at you, though, and your achievements here as graduates, I think this is your version, a new version of you. What do you think? It's a new version of you. I hope it's not the last, because I think that you have much more to offer and there will be continuous improvement as you go along. And I don't know what release you're on, but I'm anxious to see what's to come. You know, I'd like to give you, because I'm standing here, I have the privilege of giving you a little bit of advice. So I have three things that I'd like to share with you today regarding your emotional intelligence. And the first is listen and don't listen. That might seem a little contradictory, so let me explain quickly. You know, I had the joy of having great mentors in my career. I could never have achieved what I achieved without these great mentors. And, you know, I used to do technical writing. And frankly, for me, technical writing was the easiest thing in the world. All you had to do was listen, take notes, throw in a photograph, and you were a hero. It was really easy. But I had a mentor where I was working, and he said to me, you know, he said, you're an okay technical writer. He said, but that's not your greatest gift. He said, your gift is to get these subject matter experts because to cooperate. How do you do that? I had never thought about it because for me, it just came naturally. So he planted a seed, and that seed began to germinate. And then I started to work on a, with another client on a large-scale technical project that, again, required lots of cooperation. And somehow, people cooperated. I had another mentor who said three words to me that changed my entire professional career path. He said, write a book. So I did, and another, and another, and another. But those three words put me on a path that I would, did not have a vision of when I graduated with my graduate degree way back in, I, don't, I hate to say the year, it's 1976, okay? I also had the support and honest feedback of my family and friends. And I remember one book in particular I was getting a lot of rejections on. And I, I, you know, I didn't know why, so I took it to a group of friends that I called my dream team. And I said to them, you know, like, could you please help me? What is wrong with this book? So you could tell they really loved me because they actually read it. 
And then they said, oh, this is useless. And then they told me what I could do to improve it. And yes, it required a rewrite of all 300 pages, but I did it. And that book became very important in terms of the uh, professional career path that I'm on. So don't surround yourself with people who are going to tell you what you want to hear. I know it's more pleasant that way, perhaps, but I really believe that criticism could be your very best friend. Honest feedback can be your very best friend. So don't shy away when somebody has something negative to tell you, because within that kernel of negativity could be your new future. But I also said, listen and don't listen. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the don't listen part. And I know your, your family or your spouse or whatever is saying, you don't need to tell them not to listen, okay? They're already a master, right? But that whole idea is, is that there are many people out there who may discourage your dreams. Um, and I have drawers full of rejection letters from publishers uh, to prove it. But the point is, is that those letters just say no. They don't say what you maybe could do to improve. They don't say even what's wrong. They just say no. Ignore those voices. They have nothing to say to you. But the biggest voice that I needed to learn to ignore was the voice inside my own head. I don't know about you, and maybe you share, because I think you do, perhaps some of you at least, share a self-doubt voice, that voice that screams. You can't do that. That's the voice that I needed to learn how to manage the most. <coughs> the one that says you're not good enough, you know, I know mine so well that I actually give it a name. I call her my self-doubt queen. But they come in kings too, so you know, don't, don't fret. They come in, there's no gender here. Um, and I remember again another book that I was working on, and I, you know, I sent it out to Ken Blanchard for peer review. Now, Ken Blanchard, for those of you who don't know, was an, an, a very popular author in my field. And he was um, someone that I greatly admired and greatly respected. And so I sent it out to him for peer review, and of course, I didn't hear anything. And my self-doubt voice was going crazy. It's like, oh, well, you shouldn't have ever sent it. Of course, it was terrible. You know, he, he, what, what do you expect him to say? And then one day, my phone rang, and I got a call from a person who identified herself as Ken Blanchard's literary agent. And here, my self-doubt queen emerged again and said, oh, my goodness, you know, it was so bad, he had to have a surrogate call to tell you how bad it was. And I could barely, because my self-doubt queen was shouting so loud, I could barely hear her words, when, this woman's words, when she said to me, I really loved your book, and I'd like to represent it. My advice to you regarding that is do whatever it takes. If it takes putting duct tape over that self-doubt queen or king and throwing them in the trunk of your car, to tone down the drum of negativity that will kill your spirit. Do whatever it takes. But as far as that duct tape thing, like that's only for the voices in your head, not the real people in your life, just in case you're wondering. Okay. But how do you know that you're on the right path? How do you know? That brings me to my second point, and that is your feelings matter. Your feelings matter, but they don't rule. I love my work. I love my life. And I know that I get joy from my work, even in my darkest times. So feelings matter, but they don't rule. Well, what's with this they don't rule? If feelings matter, what about that? Don't let your emotions hold you hostage and decide for you how you should react. 
that is the basic premise of emotional intelligence is manage your reactions. Manage what happens. Choose how you're going to react. I guarantee you that over the course of your life, you're going to be frustrated. You're going to be angry. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be sad. We're human. We can't escape emotion, nor would we want to. Because emotion is also about love and joy and merriment and all of those other wonderful things that life brings us. But how you react in those difficult times will define you. It will shape your lives, it will shape your character, it will shape your relationships, and ultimately it will shape your success. But how do we manage yourself? And that brings me to my third and final point. I think the Boy Scouts have it right. Be prepared. Be prepared and choose your reactions. Be prepared for failure. Be prepared for the mundane. Be prepared for the unexpected. And be prepared for success. And choose your reactions. Most people's reactions to failure is to blame, to justify, to rationalize, or to beat yourself up and wallow. Okay? None of those things are useful. So be prepared. How do you want to face failure? But also be prepared for the mundane. It just seems so darn boring to talk about the mundane. But the mundane is sneaky. And it's sneaky because unlike the big negative events in your life, the mundane can swallow you in boredom or in discontent without you knowing it. Choose your reaction to the mundane. You know, everyone's life has a fair share of that mundane. We all have to take out the garbage. We have to clean the sink. In fact, sometimes the mundane makes up, I don't know about you, but at least 50% of my life. So if we choose, if we choose to be disgruntled over taking out the trash or cleaning the sink, 50% of the time we're choosing to be to a disgruntled life. Is that really what you want? I suggest that you reconsider. Perhaps you're not maybe going to be in love with taking out the trash or in love with uh, cleaning the sink. But during those times, those are times when your mind, I, I suggest that you face it with joy. Because it's during those times that your mind is free. It's free to create. It doesn't take a lot of brain power to take out the trash. So at that time, you can work on that new app that you're going to create or that new program you're going to develop, or that book you're going to write. You can think about those kinds of things. That's what the mundane can do for us. But if we're consumed instead with dread or discontent, we miss that wonderful opportunity. I have seen careers made and broken on how people face the mundane. I have also seen marriages made and broken on how we face the mundane task of raising our families and, and keeping our households running. Be prepared also for the unexpected. Choose your reaction. A couple of years ago, my dear husband Bill dropped over dead, totally unexpected. It was nowhere in my playbook was the saddest moment and the saddest time in my life. And I had to make a choice. I had to make a choice. I could stay in bed and pull the covers up over my head and not get up again. Or I could slowly begin to start a vision for a life without him. Be prepared also for your success, because it's here. Embrace it. Don't let your self-doubt queen ruin it. Don't let your arrogance ruin it either. The one thing I learned about success, my success, is that it's not something that I can take credit for. 
My success is about the legions of others who have stood before me, beside me, in front of me, and paved the way. Be sure to honor those others in your life, including my family. The great teachers that I have encountered along the way and all of those others who have contributed to my success. Go forth, do great things. I'm so excited to see the new version of you and the ones that are yet to come. And I can't wait to see where you're going to take us. Congratulations and my very best to each and every one of you. God bless. The University Choir will now present another selection for your listening enjoyment. Celebration by Cool and the Gang, arranged by Russ Shively. With a description of the academic hood and presenting the candidates for the degrees of Master of Arts Teaching, Master of Education, Master of Science, and Master of Social Work is Dr. Stanley Kamasik, Dean of the School of Graduate Studies and Research. President Jones, members of the Council of Trustees, Ms. Lynn, members of our stage party, faculty, families, guests, and most importantly, graduate candidates. On behalf of the graduate faculty, I wish to thank 
all of our graduate candidates for pursuing their academic endeavors at California University of Pennsylvania. At its core, a university is about teaching and learning, and the lives of both students and faculty are certainly enriched in the process. We thank you and we congratulate you on your achievement. Special congratulations to the candidates wearing honors cords and pins, which signify completion of graduate work at California University of Pennsylvania with a cumulative grade point average of at least 3.75. Congratulations. <laughs> Candidates, commencement is a beginning, a time to look forward to new opportunities made possible through your academic achievements. To celebrate your achievement, we look back and celebrate honors old uh, traditions in our dress and in our ceremony. Historians trace the origins of our academic dress back to the 12th century when universities first developed and scholars, both students and faculty, wore the dress of a cleric. Caps, gowns, and hoods may originally have been worn for warmth in unheated buildings, but as universities developed, official standards for academic regalia were established. The hood is the most expressive element of our dress, denoting the, schools, the, the school, the academic discipline, and the degree. I have a, a sample hood with, uh, here today. The school conferring the degree is noted by the colors on the inside of the hood. Here, and you can see in this sample, the Cal U colors of red and black. The academic discipline of the wearer is identified by this uh, velvet band, three-inch velvet band, Gold and yellow in this case signifies science. Currently, there are more than two dozen officially designated colors that are identified in the program. The length of the hood uh, denotes the degree earned. This is a master's degree hood. It's three and one half feet long. The bachelor's degree hood is three feet long and the doctor's, doctor's hood is four feet. Our hooding ceremony also continues century old traditions. It will begin when our herald, Dr. Kate Mitchum, announces each candidate. As dean of the graduate school, I have the privilege of vesting each of you with an academic hood as a symbolic gesture of your passage from student to master. Once vested, you will present yourself in full academic regalia to the president of the university to receive your diploma and to be congratulated for the significant rite of passage. Candidates, as you go forward into the future, I hope you will recall fondly this important day when we honored your achievements by honoring long-standing academic traditions. The degree candidates from the School of Graduate Studies and Research will rise, please. President Jones, the following persons have completed all the requirements for the degree of Master of Arts Teaching, Master of Education, Master of Science, Master of Science in Nursing, and Master of Social Work. They have been approved by the faculty and are presented for these degrees. Dr. Mitchum, please announce the specific curriculum and the candidates. Master of Arts Teaching, Nicole L. Alexander. James Michael Communal. Master of Education, the Administration Program for K-12 Principles Curriculum, Kathleen Ann Accomando. David Robert Boyd. Nicole Marie Davis. Sean Patrick Gillis.
Heather Colleen Hibner. Kayla Marie Hall Jensen. Arthur Scott Ruby. Lindsay D. Kuhn. Robert Thomas Mealy. Amanda Charlene Shutters. The Elementary Education Curriculum, Kelly Marie Adams. Janelle D. Kirby. A. Scott McLeod. Michelle Nicole Pons. Jason Allen Scott. Lee Ann Sperry. Marissa Dawn Springer. Kelly N. Verdu. Eric Allen Wilkins. The Elementary Special Education Dual Certification Curriculum, Cassie Lee Bonnell. John L. Boscovic. Michelle Lynn Boyd. Nicole Gianna Carangola. Catherine Rose Faye Cheney. Cassandra Elise Enos. Amberlynn Heilman. Darla Ann Pernal. Sutton Elaine Lenhart. Ther Therese Marie Marcelic. Jacqueline Chehi Nam. The Mentally Physically Handicapped Curriculum, Paige Elizabeth Conley. Melissa Renee De, De Simon. <laughs> Courtney Elizabeth Frudenberg. <laughs> Jessica A. Johnson. <laughs> Rachel Lee Madder. <laughs> William A. Schleicher. Stephanie Lynn Slavic. <laughs> Brittany Murray Stepanik. The Reading Specialist Curriculum, Angela Marie Aquilante. <laughs> Betsy Lee Bacon. <laughs> Ashley Ray Bird. Kelly Lee Hens. Amanda Lee Hoff. Jamie Alexis Hauser. Esther Marie Johnson. Amanda Marie Reese. Kristen Lee Sakura. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Wassel.
the school counselling curriculum, Chelsea L. Brownlee. Gina Marie Graham. Alexandros Makelos Nikolopoulos. Michael P. Ryan. Jordan David Verbovsky. The Technology Education Curriculum, Susan Michelle Solba. Andrew J. Kuskill. Solima Rika Moya. Master of Science, the Business Administration Curriculum, Sean P. Carnathan. Terry L. Carnathan. Robert Scott Crawl II. Joseph Robert Gudak. Carl Joseph Holly. Mark E. Hannaford. Rebecca Lynn Hollis. Erica Renee Hoover. Katie L. Karlowski. Frank Matthew Kalesha. Daniel J. Lippert. Chase Anthony Loper. Mia Prasuti Lunardi. Lori Marie Navarro. Miranda M. Novak. Rachel Ann Riscitelli. James Brett Robinson. Edward Michael Russman. The Community and Agency Counseling Curriculum, Emma Jackson Harris. Crystal L. Witt Wittmeyer. The Exercise Science and Health Promotion Curriculum, Hamid Ajinia. Marie Teresa Arnone. Hussam Abraham Barney. Lisa Marie Bartolowitz. Mark Alexander Beatty. Crystal Ann H. Bellen. Erin Marie Bernier. Laura Marie Benotas. Jason Robert Bohot. Alicia Cheyenne Branson. Ryan Charles Broad. Amanda A. Cecil. Michael Paul Sensi. Miranda Lee Costa. Dennis Michael Cox II. Joshua Dalton. Richard Joseph Day.
Annika Joanne Flowers. <laughs> Leonard C. Hardy II. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Hively. <laughs> Patrick August Intrepido. Johanna Marie Jacobson. Patrick Christopher Jack. Michael Anthony Jimenez. Lisa N. Kephart. Brittany Alexis Klingerman. Stacy A. Krepsky. Michael John Laskowski. William Ernest Mitchell. Rhonda Lynn Moore. Katina Laverne Morris. Elizabeth Marat. KTB Nikes. Patrice Ann Nesbitt. Rachel Ellen O'Malley. Angela Mary Palmieri. Lisa E. Rucker. Keith Lee Schuhart. Brian Michael Shannon. Monice J. Sigour. Michael R. Stone. John Valentic. Daniel Varley. Audric Ranel Warren. Amy Jeanette Wheeler. Melissa Lee Whitley. Legal Studies, Law and Public Policy Curriculum, Barry A. Baldwin. Woo! Colleen Burns. Woo! Anthony Edwin Glab. Woo! Sheena M. Maliska. Woo! Wayne Harrison Schrock. Amanda Jo Smith. <laughs> Carol D. Urechko. <laughs> the School Psychology Curriculum, Latoya N. Brown. <laughs> Shapri Lauren Cox Smith. Megan Patricia Di Lorenzo. <laughs> Megan Lee DeVries. <laughs> Kelly Ray Kaminsky. <laughs> Brittany R. Liptak. <laughs> Levi Robert Naylor. Michelle Potts. Luca Jean Scalera. Courtney Louise Vesco.
the Sport Management Studies Curriculum, Denise M. Brown. Kia D. Stone. Stephen James Thiel. Stephen Michael Volock. Andrew James Walter. Master of Science in Nursing, Kimberly Ann Bartolowitz. Erica Elise Brown. Gail Ann Burson de Lucia. Lisa Nicole Fielder. Lindsay Joy Hauk. Catherine Mary Powers. Dina Marie Sheriff. Lisa Marie Spinnerweber. Rachel A. Stearns. Master of Social Work, Rebecca Faith Glagola. Amber Birel Harris. Randy Nicole Hill. Anthony Kane Jr. Amy Lynn Lynch. Caitlin M. Meehan. Samantha M. Pringle. President Jones, several candidates have requested to graduate in absentia. Their names are listed in the program. Madam President, the candidates who have been presented to you have been certified by the faculty and the dean as having fulfilled all the requirements for the degrees of Master of Arts Teaching, Master of Education, Master of Science, and Master of Social Work. I recommend that the degrees be conferred. By the power vested in me by the Board of Governors of the Pennsylvania System of Higher Education, I hereby confer the degrees of Master of Arts Teaching, Master of Education, Master of Science, and Master of Social Work with all the rights, honors, and privileges which throughout the world pertain to that degree. Masters, graduates, be seated, please. I would like to note <laughs> great support systems, wonderful. I would like to note that we have graduates with us this evening who have earned their degrees 100% online through our CalU Global Online Program. These online students are distinguished here this evening by a pen that is affixed to their caps, and the pen reads, Cal U Global Online. 
With this graduating class, we have students from across the United States, including Florida, Texas, Alabama, and the state of California. All of these students have taken part in the global online experience. However, graduate student Patrick Jack from San Diego, California, traveled the furthest to be with us this evening. Welcome to Patrick and all of our online students. To all our graduates, congratulations. You have our very best wishes for a wonderful future. Be safe and take care and visit us often. In conclusion, we will now sing the first verse of the alma mater, after which Reverend Quisenberry will present the benediction. I ask that the audience remain in their seats following the benediction and until the end of the recessional. Thank you and safe travels. May God bless you and keep you, and in grateful response, may you love with passion and action, continue to pursue both knowledge and wisdom, and live lives of excellence and service, so that peace may be your constant companion and joy your life's song. Amen.